them what you like. We are worshiping God. So you can stand up, worship with us, join us. Close your eyes if that's what you want to do. Raise your hand if that's what you want to do.
when we had to gather to see of our brother and everything happened behind the scenes, isn't it? This is the first time I've seen Sister Rita after such a collaboration we had um, over, over Zoom to make that uh, possible. I am standing here with two warnings. As I was sitting down, I was being pinched so many times that George, please do speak to me. So all the speech that I have made, I have put it aside. The second one is that you cannot see the shirt I'm wearing. Um, I used to be six pack, but this shirt has exposed me. So I've been told to breathe and breathe out too much so that it would expose me. So I'll run that to be short. Our brother Hero has left a legacy. And it is one that we all have to cherish. And of course, when it comes to times like this, we all gather thinking it is just about marriage. And 
or wise from their grave. Then together with them, we who are still alive remain and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Amen. I believe if not all of us, 95% of us are Christians. So wherever we are, we have to be confident and to show who we are in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Is and our God is good indeed. And is good all the time. He's good in good times. And is good in bad times. He's the same God of the mountain. The same God of the past. The same God in the midst of difficulties and challenges. It's the same God. When everything is okay and everything is going on well, so our God is good indeed. Amen. Now we are all here to celebrate our brother Hero's life. The life he lived on earth. And we've heard a few testimonies about the life he lived in the food. We had testimony about changes of career and the greatest one of all is serving God. Amen. He served God fully to the end. And there's one thing that I won't forget about about a different uh, that even when he was in hospital, he was thinking of the work of God. While he was in hospital, he lived in his last days. And I spoke to him. He was showing me, trying to show me how to connect to Zoom because we were meeting on Zoom. And I could you know, hear from my voice, from his voice, that he was struggling. And he wanted to teach me what to do. And that is our brother here. Amen. So, as our brother said earlier on, he left a legacy that we must also follow. Amen. Now, in the scripture that we read today from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse from verse 13 down to verse 18. Now it talks about a church in, the, in Thessalonica in the early Christian's life. Now this church were fully into the things of God and they were expecting the coming of the Lord. They were expecting the Lord's arrival with anxiousness. But during that time, they were going through persecutions and challenges. And they were being killed as well. So even though they were doing the work of God, they were also worried and a lot of questions were going on in their mind about their loved ones who have passed away. They were thinking, what would happen to them? When the Lord comes back. Because the expectation was that the Lord will come during their lifetime. But then because of the persecutions, some of them will die. And so to them, what will happen to the loved ones who have died? Would that be the end of their hope and expectation of the coming of the Lord? So they were worried. And for things to be clear to them, now Paul wrote a letter to them, giving them assurance of the fact that there is hope for the dead as well. Amen. And Paul's letter to them gave them hope and confidence that no matter what they go through, no matter how things will change for their loved ones, 
there is always hope for the future. And today, as we are all gathered here, we want to learn a few lessons or take a word of comfort from the letter that Paul wrote to the church in the saloon. And first thing that I want us to take across is that there is hope of reunion. Amen. There is hope of reunion. Life is not all about him, but there is life after death. There is life after death. So if you want to die as a believer, your life doesn't end here, but you live on. Amen. And that is where our brother Hero is at the moment. Now during his lifetime, Brother Hero believed in the resurrection of the dead. He believed in the reunion of the saints. He believed in the rapture. He believed that those who have died, there will be a time that they will resurrect again. And so, because he believed, he lived a life worthy of it. Now, with the lesson that we read, from Thessalonians chapter 4, now Paul said to the believers, now he says that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpets of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Now, Paul is saying that life is not all about him. And he's saying that there's hope for our brother hero who have died. A time is coming when there will be a rapture. A time will come when the Lord himself will come down and take unto himself his church and that is the rapture and every believer who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ is open for this particular moment for this particular event for this particular day and whatever we are doing on earth we are doing it for this particular moment and now things that are going on around us are indications that the ground is being set ready for that moment when the rapture will take place and the events that will happen. Everything that happened for the past couple of years about two years ago with all these restrictions and things that were happening were all signs that are indicating that the coming of the Lord is very close. Now the purpose of the rapture is for the Lord to take his church away before the wrath of God is poured upon the earth. And that is the purpose of the rapture. And that is why we are all hoping for that expectation. And the Bible says that when Jesus comes, we are not going to go with him and leave the dead behind. We are not going to leave the kingdom behind. And we will be raptured. And when Jesus comes, priority is going to be given to our brother Hero. Hallelujah. The Bible says that those who have died in the law will be raised first 
And then we who are alive and remain in the Lord will then be raptured. So the other is that those who have died who go first, they will be resurrected first, and we will join them together in the air to meet the Lord. Now, if not all of us have traveled before, most of us have traveled. And when you are at the airport and you are sitting down waiting, there are groups who have a priority uh, uh, pass. And we have uh, people who have uh, uh, priorities where you can wait in the executive lounge while you are chilling up and waiting for your flights to be ready. Now currently, Brother Hero is waiting at the executive lounge and enjoying himself with the Lord, waiting for the time of the departure. Hallelujah. And so when the time comes, now the trumpet will sound for one. You know, you never hear that sound in the airport. Is it and then the announcement will follow. Now the announcement will say that passengers traveling to heaven on flight number RAP TURE, please get ready for boarding. And on the few they will come again and they will say, Now please listen to the order of boarding. Now, first, the priority ones group will be boarding first. The adults and children first, and those who have probably passed will then board. After that, everyone will board. And so, when the last trumpet sounds, Brother Hero. He will rise first. And he will board the flight first. He's not going to be first. We are all going to the same place. But he will board the flight first. And after he has bought the flight, then we who are alive and remain in the Lord, let's take note, remain in the Lord. Not all of us who are alive. Those who are alive and remain in the Lord. I mean, those who are believe. Lord Jesus Christ, and you have accepted him as their Lord and personal Savior, who they bought. And so, as Sister Felicia, Jojo, and all the families, and all of us who are here, who are believed, we are going to be reunited to our brother hero on the flight. Hallelujah. And we are all going to join the same flight with Jesus. The captain of the flights, and he is going to usher us all into the Father's home in heaven. Hallelujah! And so, there's hope for the future. It's not lost, it's not gone, but it is there waiting for us. Amen. And to give you more assurance. The time that Paul wrote this letter to the church, it was about 2,000 years ago. And during that time, they were believing that Jesus will come, the Lord will come during their lifetime. Here we are 2,000 years. But the coming of the Lord is closer than ever before. And the sign that we are seeing is telling us closer and closer. If Jesus is to come to me, are we ready to go there? And so even if those who have died long time, they were waiting for me. And so Paul is saying that we should be reassured and take heart in this, that one day we will see him. And so writer says, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints are guarded and we will tell the story how we overcome. And another hymn writer says, soon and very soon, 
we are going to see the king. And we are not only going to see the king soon and very soon, but we are also going to see our brother Timo. Amen. And so for us all who are alive, the question is, if Jesus is to come today, how ready are we? Are we ready to go with him? Are we ready to board the flights? Are we ready to be part of the selection? Are we ready or we are not ready? If we are not ready, the coming of the Lord is so close. It's so close. It's so close. All the things that happen in the species and everything, they are rehearsal to what will happen when the church is raptured. So after the church is raptured, things that will happen, everything that is happening now with all the restrictions and everything, they have been held up for what will happen. So Jesus is coming soon. So let us all be ready. And if you are here and you don't know the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is coming. And this time, He's not coming as the Savior of the world. Because the wrath of God is coming upon the world. And because of that, God gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. He came and died. And he says that anyone who will believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And when he comes this time, he's not coming as a savior. He's coming to take his church away. And when the church is taken away, the rapture will take place and the wrath of God will be poured upon the earth. Are you ready to be part of a church? Or you want to be left alone? If you have not accepted the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior, this is the time we've heard about our demon, taking healing testimonies, and things that he has done. He is in a better place. And nobody knows when the Lord is coming. He can come tonight. He can come tomorrow. He can come this very minute. He can come any time. So procrastination is not an option. If you have never given your life to me, this is the time for you to reflect on your life and give your life unto me. For Jesus is coming soon. And we will be reunited with our brother, our father, our friend, our deacon, King. Amen. Shall we close our eyes? And as we have all closed our eyes, I want you to reflect on your life personally. The Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, it is a judgment. But hero is currently waiting at the executive lounge for his reward. If Jesus is to come today, where will he be? Reflect on your life and talk to God. If you are a Christian and you look at your life, and you need to change things in your life, talk to him. Don't open your mouth when you want to hear him. Talk to him. If you are somebody who has never known him, he is ready. He is a loving God. And anyone who comes to him, he will never forsake our abandon. And is willing to take him as if you will accept him as your Lord and as your Lord. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We honor you for your faithfulness and your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the hope we have as believers. We thank you for the hope we have in our beloved who are God to you. We know that when the trumpet sounds in the last days, they will be resurrected. 
And we, together with them, shall meet you in the air and go into our Father's glory. This is the hope we have and we thank you. We pray, Lord, anyone who is here and has known you and has spoken to you for when we put for us, Father, you will use every heart. I pray, Lord, we will touch and listen. Oh, 
of you knows me from Pekar. I have big t-shirts. And I thought, you know, I don't deserve it. He said, no. You are part of him. And he did the same for the pandemic. He, when I went to Europe and I followed him to church, he did not open the Bible and preach to me. But his life, what he says to me, I said to him, what church you go to? And I followed him. My children, they won't follow me to his wife. But I said, I'm coming to Uncle Hero. They follow me. Because they know him. He will call and he will speak to them. Brothers and sisters, let us serve God. Not just preaching. I let our life, wherever we are, whatever we do, when we open our mouth, it should be an example of you. Let's be humble in our conversation, in our interaction. Whatever we do, lead the hand, help out to a friend. Thank you very much.
like a river. Can we all sing together as a slide? Father, we thank you and we bless your name. 
We honor you and we glorify you. King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you for the life of our brother and our deacon hero, who is in your person. Thank you for the life he lived. And we thank you, Father, for everything. We know not that a time is coming when the trumpets just sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. And all those who remain alive in the Lord, in your coming, shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And together we shall be forever in the presence of the Lord. We know, Lord, that we will see him again sooner. And therefore, Lord, we are trusting in your humble care. As you continue to comfort him, as you continue to shelter him, through the day when the last trumpet was sound. By the king hero, by the day. May he so continue to rest in perfect peace until the day when he will approach it and be reunited. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you for the name. In Jesus' name.
really welcome Elder Felicia Carter here. Just because you want to have a child. 
Life is more than a child. And it's only not your biological children that are your children. I waited for the Lord and He gave me a husband. He's the best thing that ever happened to my life. He's the best that ever happened to my life. I have enjoyed every bit for the 22 years of marriage. I have enjoyed it. I'm not saying that there hasn't been challenges. Yes, there have been challenges. But I don't know about Rocky having a marriage. I stand here to testify that I don't know. I don't know how it feels like. Neither do I even want to know that because I'm not sure whether I really want to get married again. Because I'm so fulfilled. I am so fulfilled. I didn't think it would be that soon. And I know that the Lord who gave me my husband, he knew that after 22 years, he would take it away from me, he would take him away from me. And he knew. He knew. And Brethren, as I stand here, reflecting back, reflecting on things, how things unfolded, getting to the end of his life, I knew that the Lord was already revealing to us that it was his time. But being human, we will never accept it. And we even continue rebuking death. We continue rebuking the spirit of death. We and rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt. And we've forgotten that the Lord who gives is the same God who takes away. May his name be praised. I've got so many things to say, but I'm not here to, to um, at least pray. We've had a good time. In abundance, in need, in, in time of need, and in time of abundance. We've been to holidays together. We've been on grace together. We've had challenges together. We've advised ourselves. We've stepped on each other's toes. But one thing that sticks to me so much is that it's really, hero is really a man. Before I got married, I've always thought I've always been thinking, oh, I'm short. And therefore, I want a big, tall man. And I don't want to marry from me. Those of us who are from Teshi, I said, I will never marry someone from Teshi. But every box that I made, God just threw them all off. And to prove to me that his is the best. He doesn't come from, you know, that he, he didn't come here from Teshi, but he lived in Teshi and he behaved typically like a Teshi man. I always tell him, I always tell him, you are too loud, you are too loud. I'm sorry, those of you from Teshi, it's a tower, it's a fishing tower or a small tower in the Accra. And I'm sorry to say, some of them are so loud. You'll be, you'll, you'll be talking so loud, you could hear him talking so far, you couldn't hear him. But indeed, I grew to love him. He, is, he was really a husband. He was really a husband. On his way from work, he would call me and he would say, Philippe, there, bye. Big bag, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. That is his favorite. It was his favorite dish, uh, fried plantain, and he loved rice and stew. So there is always, always stew in the fridge. And any time he's coming from work, he's holding his shopping bag, either the banana uh, plantain in it, or there anything that 
that contents him or there is meat in it for me to make stew for him. There must always be stew in the fridge. And plantain, you make sure there is plantain. And then on his way coming, he'll say, Philip, if you feel much, hey, she am not down on me. Can you fry fries? Fry plantain for me. And then I'll say, okay, but when you are about five minutes old, just let me know so that I can make it so you can have it hot. And then he will say, okay. And by the time he comes, the fried plantain is ready. And he wouldn't bother you. Once he comes and the plantain is ready, you just get on whatever he's doing, get his rice from the fridge. Even if there is no rice, he will just, the rice will cut his head. He will make himself rice. Once there's stew, not that he cannot make stew, but he would prefer that I make it. And that, therefore, once there is stew, he would just make sure, he just make it so, uh, fix himself, get the plantain, and off he goes. You know, and as soon as one another minute, but by the time he reached, he parked the car. I could hear the noise following him because his mobile phone would be so loud, and the, the stereo in his car would also be so loud. So as soon as he parked, he parked the car, and then turn off the, the the engine. I could hear the phone following him. Listening to uh, who is one of his favorite Ghanaian uh, channels. He will listen, I'm sure he, he even told me that even in the office, he's always got his, uh, this, uh, his earphone and he, he will be working at the same time, listening to the news, debates and the rest. And you can never beat him with any debate on those of any topic, any, especially with politics, Ghana politics especially. You can never, never outwit him. And that's the man. And I call him when, when in some places they, they ask him, What's the name of your husband? And I call him, said, Hero. And then they'll say, Oh, your hero. And I said, Yes, he's indeed my hero. And he was. He was my hero. And he is still my hero. Because the impact he's had on me. He's the one who will say, if you don't have an alternative answer for a situation, do not condemn it. If you condemn it, then make sure you have an alternative better uh, suggestion to make. If you don't have it, just be quiet and let's go with what we've got. You know, and he will always be principal. He doesn't care whether it's the president, when I, whoever it is, he will speak the truth to your face, and that is it. And then one thing he also do that has actually helped me more, that I've actually learned from it is, he will make sure when he knows he is, or he was right in whatever he's doing, he will make sure he will fight at grounds until he's won. He will never give it. There are times that I will be scared and I will say, oh, it. He no, 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 no. He will go and make research and he will challenge it and make sure he will, he, he will warn the argument or he will warn the, the case several times, you know. And therefore, as we all sit here and celebrate him, I just want us all, one as individual, I pray that each one of us. One day when we are no more, one day when we are no more, people could say something, or people should actually feel that you have left an impact or a legacy. He has really left a legacy. And I haven't been the same. Since our marriage, you, I have not been the same. In every aspect, I have never been the same. In knowledge, in education, in being a mother, and in being a wife, I've never been the same. 
I'm, I want to see his father, and I will always correct him. Cut his hair, hit hair, hair for him. And uh, he, at times you wait until in the morning, Sunday morning when you are rushing, then you say, hey, you need to cut my hair for me. <laughs> and well, with a little argument, I just get on and do it. And I love doing it. Because each time I'm doing it, I'm trying to massage his head and I'm praying. And I'm praying. No wonder he loves me so much. And wherever he is, he will say it. He will come back home and tell me, look, today this lady and this lady was telling me this and that. And I told them that I've got a wife at home. And they will say, <laughs> and then they will, he, he will say, they will say, oh, it's you I want. You I want. It's not your wife. <laughs> you know. And then he will, he will go on and say, you know what? Tomorrow when I'm going to work, just prepare something and I'll go and give it to them, you know. And I will do, just prepare something, make some color fries or some wache, parcel it nicely and give it to him and he will go and give it to them, you know. That's how, how rich he was in humor. He was so, so rich. I'm a miserable one, you know, but he was so, so rich in humor in every aspect. You know, and he was so knowledgeable. If he meant to do something, he would make sure he would do it. And I do take advantage of it, especially when I'm doing my some assignments. What I would do is, as soon as I draft the thing, I draft whatever I want to do, I will just leave it. Even when he was sleeping, I would call him, please, come, come. Come and read through for me, please. And then he say, ah. And I will make sure he gets out of the bed, and he will buy. He just be chuckling and chuckling, but he would sit down and read through for me. He made me so lazy in that aspect, you know. And I really made him really, really missed him. Really, really missed him. But I stand here to say I'm still so grateful. I'm grateful for to the Lord. I'm grateful for what He is and what the Lord has taken us through as a family. Since we lost him, we did, I, I, I in particular, I didn't know how we were going to go through. Especially when it was locked down and you can't go where you are just in the house, just looking in the four corners of the house. But the Lord has been so faithful. He always tells me, just put your trust in me, not in man. Put your trust in me. Because man will fail you. And man is unreasonable, is, unre is unreliable like myself. So when I look at myself and I realize how unreliable I am, I can relate to everyone else. And therefore I do not blame anyone and I do not accuse anyone because myself, I am also unreliable. The only reliable God the only reliable person we have is our God. He is so faithful. He is so faithful. I just want to take this opportunity to sing this song. I can't sit down without singing this song. Oh Lord, my God. Just be quiet. No one should sing with me, please. <laughs> Just be quiet. And how many of you feel like singing? Oh Lord, my God. When I may now sound wonder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. I see the stars. Oh. 
thank you. Now we all know that they can hear what is the MC brothers and sisters. Please permit me to add my voice to the testimonies before we pray. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Pastor Enoch, my friend and pastor of Faith House Ministries. One day, I was privileged to be invited by Faith House to fellowship. And from then, I kept going to Faith House to fellowship because the place I love to fellowship. Hallelujah. That was where I met the King Hero for the very first time. And I met him as someone who was serving as our sister, rightly testifying. Then at a point along the line, I spoke to Pastor Enoch and said, I needed help with media, uh, with a media software. Then Pastor Enoch said, the person to go to is speaking hero. So I requested Pastor Enoch if he could speak with the hero and um, for me, and he did. And Pastor Enoch called me and said, Deacon Hero says he would like to help. And so he gave me the contact number. I spoke to Deacon Hero. He was very humble down to earth. And he kindly gave me an appointment to meet him at home. That was the first time I went to Deacon Hero and Sister Felicia's house. And he welcomed me so nicely. Gave a lot of time, taught me everything that I needed to know. He was a very knowledgeable man, well researched, well read. And that was how I connected with his family. And it was the same, it is the same experience with a number of Faith House families. And this is the man we remember him today. If we want to testify about the King Hero, we will not be able to live here today. But like every one of us who has had some kind of contact with him, he's made a lot of impression, positive impression on our lives. He's affected each of our lives so powerfully. And we thank God for the privilege of knowing him. And we thank God for his family, his wife, his children, his church that he loved so much, and every friend and colleague who has worked with him. For his life, we are very thankful. Please shall we rise. Death is an experience you may never know how it is until it happens to you. And so we thank you for being here today. Please shall we bow our heads if you want to close your eyes.
to the nations of the world that are benefited in one way or the other because he's impacted our lives and he's using us to affect the world. Thank you, Lord. And we also thank you, O oh God, that when it was time, you received him back to us. Tonight, we are grateful for all the testimonies we've heard for the word of God we had reminded us that one day, just as we left the womb of our mothers into this womb of this world, we will leave the womb of this world and step into eternity. And so together with the psalmist, our prayer, each of us here is Lord, teach us to number our days. We may gain hearts of wisdom. Help us to discover our purpose on this earth, Lord. And help us to fulfill them before the day we are called out of here. God, you are the husband and the defender of widows. We are the Lord, you will comfort and you will defend your daughter and your servant, Elder Felicia, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the father to the fatherless. As one who lost my father very many years ago, I know how it feels, but you have been there every step of the way. Lord, we pray that you will be the father to these precious children of the hero in the name of Jesus. We pray that Lord, you comfort every church member, you comfort, comfort every welcome, you comfort every friend and everyone who has had a privilege of coming to contact with the you. About what we pray, O oh Lord, that all the wonderful, the good, and great things you help us to learn from this life, help us to apply them to our lives. Just as we had a word. If there is anyone here who does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we pray that the Holy Spirit work on their hearts. That Lord will convict every soul. That we will all be given to Jesus Christ the way, the truth, and the life. That when we step out of this world, we will be sure that we are stepping into the eternity we come. We use this opportunity also, O God, to pray for all those who have lost a loved one during the pandemic and after. We ask that Lord, you will comfort them. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will heal wounds. And we ask that Lord, you will strengthen their hearts. We pray and ask that Lord, you will continue to build your church in which you planted the big hero in the name of Jesus. That more the church will continue to affect the community and the nation. God, the healer, if there is anyone among us here in pain, have been suffering from any sickness or disease, by reason of this gathering, in memory of the hero, let your healing hands touch them in the name of Jesus. We pray that Lord God, if there is any family suffering, Lord God, that your strength and the strength of your hand will rest upon them in the name of Jesus. And we pray that if there is anyone looking for a church to attend, let them follow the testimonies to the church in which the hero worshiped. Our God and our King, we lift this nation unto you during this hour. We ask the Lord, you will move your hand over this nation, the United Kingdom, in the name of Jesus. This is where the hero lived the rest of his life before you called him. And on today, as we remember him, we ask the Lord, you will look upon the situation of this nation with your kindness and with your mercy, O oh God. And let Christ reign. We ask that you will lead and guide us in choosing the next leader of this nation. One who will have a heart for Christ. One who allowed him or herself to be led of you as you lead through them in this nation. And we thank you for your churches. 
and you will bring the breath of life upon your church. Make you will serve you in the church. We give you all the glory. And when it's time for us to depart from here, Lord, we pray that just as you brought us safely, please lead each of us home safely. We return all the glory to you. We return all the honor to you. And we give you all adoration. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Shall we all please share the grace together? Say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now. Thank you very much, Pastor Christian. Thank you very much. We ask um, Deaconess Frederica Amante for. Good evening, everyone. It is an honor to be called upon to give me vote of thanks on behalf of the Paradigm family. I first give glory and honor to God, by whom nothing would have been possible today. We thank God. For his faithfulness, his love, and his goodness to all of us. Secondly, I thank the pastors, Pastor Enoch Tete, Pastor Christian Gremanuka, Pastor Mrs. Richard Anama, and I can see. Pastor Gladys and Sinami are somewhere there. Thank you all for supporting us here today. I thank members of Faith House Ministry for being here. I thank them for their support for the Paradi family. Thank you. I thank colleagues of the became hero, the North East London Foundation Trust police, especially the back in Indiana Community Mental Health Service staff. God bless you all for being supportive since the past to glory. Lastly, I thank friends and family, friends at heart, wonderful friends, supportive friends, the unsung heroes who supported the Padades in their darkest hour. You've been wonderful. And they are faithful. They are thankful. They are grateful for all your help rendered. Thank you all and God bless you. Thank you. After we started uh, the first part, as we all know, we are here to celebrate uh, the life of taking hero on his name quite So the second part we will have uh, groups here who will dance with the family. And uh, the DJ will treat us with uh, music, various music, um, Ghanaian uh, traditional music, apart from the other generals that we know. So there will be Panlobo, Obobo, Agaja, and Adua. So we have all these traditional um, music, uh, songs being uh, played here. Um, as we all know, when we events like this where drinks are served, one destination that uh, we all tend to visit more frequently is the toilet. So I think I need to tell you where the toilets are, so it's quite easy for you to be able to go there. So,
so nice to see dancing by the gay family. That's so nice.
evening's pride. Please come to the floor to demonstrate.